Hello and welcome to another Overlord Law video and today we are going to take a closer look at something one can only describe as deadly or rather undeadly for we are going to take a look why Jerknuf, the Emperor of the Empire of Baharut, did not even try to conquer the Kingdom of Riestais, despite his constant declarations of war. But before we're going to take a closer look at any of this, let me quickly thank my Patreons for supporting this channel, as well as all users of the YouTube thanks function for making one-time donations. And now with that said, let's take a look at the geopolitical situation. As I have explained it many times before, the Empire wanted to conquer the Kingdom of Riestais, but instead of charging into a geographically well-defended border region, into an extremely numerous army, supported by a small but incredibly powerful royal warrior unit, as well as a couple of thousand elite warriors, granting them with nothing else a very sturdy defense. Furthermore, with hundreds of thousands of soldiers in its ranks, the army could sustain losses that would cripple the Imperial Legions without being rendered combat ineffective. The Empire used another angle of attack and since most soldiers are just peasants pressed into military service, their labor force went missing every time they have to mobilize. Which not entirely coincidentally was right at the time of the harvest, meaning the kingdom would have one bad harvest after another. This drained the finances and the economy of Riestais to the breaking point, while the Empire under the brilliant Jerknuf prospered and increased in wealth and power. But even with the Kingdom badly weakened and the Empire being militarily superior in all aspects but sheer numbers, Jerknuf did not plan to conquer the Kingdom anytime soon and the reason for this are the undead. Now, this isn't the last time that the undead would become a problem for the Emperor. But with the cuts plain between the Empire and the Kingdom, Jerknuf did not want to incorporate the Kingdom yet. And this leads to a very obvious question. Why is there a plane filled with the undead in the first place? Was this thing always there? Is this perhaps the reason for why the Kingdom's borders and the Empire's borders did not conflict sooner? And perhaps a change in size triggered the recent war? And the answer to all of this is no. The undead plane had been created artificially. See? Undead can spawn at places of negative energy, for example a graveyard. But the amount of energy required is quite great. A small village graveyard with a couple of hundred souls in them. Like for example that in Karn would not generate much negative energy. However, the graveyard of Irantel, that occupied one fourth of the outer ring, was spewing half a dozen of undead each night. And this is in spite of the graves being tended to and the undead being appeased with offerings and prayer. But on the cuts plane where the dead not merely rest, well, to be fair, they don't rest much these days, but in a place where the people have actually died, where perhaps a hundred thousand lost souls were slain at some point in time, where the earth is soaked with blood and agony, negative energy to feed the undead was abundant. And this no man's land between the hostile nations became a heart of the undead, shrouded in fog every day, every year, except on the day where the annual battle takes place, as if the undead plane knows, it will be fed. So in short, the death and the despair and the agony of all the fallen soldiers on this now accursed battlefield have charged the soil with negative energy and has turned it into a plane of undead. And with the plane crawling with skeletons and less undead, both Riestais and the Empire had permanent undead extermination quests issued in order to contain the plane, or rather its undead. Still with so many undead wandering this plane, more powerful undead occasionally spawned thanks to the ample supply of negative energy. And we are talking about death knights, which required Fluder Paradine and his disciples to capture. And for as long as the undead plane persists, it would be quite hard to conquer the kingdom 
for even if Rhea's ties would have fallen thanks to the might of the Imperial Legions, the Undead Plain would now sit right in the middle of the entire country, and the many undead would impede trade and troop movements, raid supply lines, and disrupt communications. And since the way through Irantel is the only way to enter the kingdom from the Empire, there aren't any good alternatives to going near the Cuts Plane, meaning that until the issue would have been solved, the Empire would not be able to supply the newly conquered regions adequately. But luckily, Fluder Paradine had already a solution for this problem. Instead of seeing the undead as a liability, as a burden, Fluder and Jerknuf wanted to turn them into assets, using the skeletons controlled and enthralled by magic as a source of very cheap labor, thus further strengthening the empire and ensuring that many more men will become available in order to serve in the Imperial Legions, without weakening the agricultural output in the process. And peasants, after all, are excellent stock for soldiers. But with the Death Knight in Fluter's basement still resisting control, and the temples likely protesting the mere idea of using an undead labor force, the plan could not be implemented yet. That is, until Einzulgon had revealed himself, until he had conquered the plain, and after the Empire became a vessel of the Sorcerer Kingdom. All that was required for an undead labor force to appear in the Empire was an instruction issued via Albedo. And with that said, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts and ideas down in the comment section. And as usual, I say my special thanks to Dash Dash Dash, Arda Daddy Arda, Bad Guy Ye, Bad Burrito 316, Bize, Ben C, Brandon D, Chrissy, Crowley 0221, Sia, Crystal Prime, Dead Slime, Death is Mercy, Deathless Dragonlord, Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devon Downen, Ding Dong, Duckwagon, Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia II, Enigmatic Unicorn, Feral Shivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Moreno, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Kyle R, Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Le Lush Fribetania with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishiki and Rai, Lord Touch Me, Love Razor, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, O'Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Primus Eleven, Rhinomir, Cunic Caracos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rocket Smasher, T.E. Wang, The Shark Eye, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Xenokai, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.